Hello everybody, and welcome to Rogue Tech. I am Sir Bedian, and today we're going to do something a little bit different to what we've been doing for the last couple of months. And uh, we're going to have a look at something that I've been a little bit sunk into for uh, about a month and a bit now. Um, and that, of course, is Rogue Tech. Rogue Tech is, of course, the mod for the rather exceptional uh, Battletech game by Hairbrained Schemes uh, that came out uh, earlier this year. Uh, and as if you're not familiar with uh, Battletech, it's MechWarrior, uh, except uh, the tabletop top-down, essentially what Mech Commander uh, tried to be. And Battletech is all about big, giant, heavy, stomping robots punching and blowing the ever-loving crap out of each other. Now, Battletech had a campaign. Has a campaign. Rogue Tech takes it away and turns it into a bit more of a roguelike sandbox. Now, I am about two days out of date. I'm running on uh, 992 Economy Patch 3. Um, there's a couple, been a couple of hot fixes since then. Hopefully, they're not going to interfere with anything. Um, development flies by really fast on Rogue Tech, but uh, yeah, ho hopefully it'll be fine. Now we can customize difficulty settings a little bit, but we're going to go for the standard campaign. Now, Mech Warrior, Mech Commander, um, those games did a lot of pretty good stuff when it comes to. Uh, representing the Battletech universe. Um, I first got into mechs with uh, MechWarrior 2 back when I was a teeny kid and my computer basically couldn't really run it. Um, I couldn't run it. I couldn't figure out how to play it. Um, I was fascinated. I fell in love with the lore and the world and the idea of big giant stomping robots. Uh, blowing the crap out of each other, but unfortunately, I could never get into it. Then along came, well, two things. First of all, me being older and having a more uh, powerful computer, and secondly, Mech Commander. Mech Commander is the first game I'm aware of, uh, or at least video game, that took mechs from a first-person perspective into a top-down essentially uh, RTS, almost RTS, limited number of units, um, a, a top-down series of game. And being able to control your... Audio jump. Ooh, here we go. Uh, where was I? Um, right, so uh, Mech Commander took you into the top-down game. And it, uh, I believe, if I remember correctly, it uh, basically put you in the hands of an invading um, Hus Davion, Davion, I think, army, uh, invading one of uh, the core planets. It was basically it's supposed to be like the first step Yes, thank you. Uh, it was meant to be basically the first step on a massive invasion into um, uh, into Innisfere space. Now, uh, obviously, the second game ex expanded upon that, made it a little bit better, but also made it a lot worse in a lot of places, and it kind of was a little bit on the disappointing side. Since then, there's been, I think, a couple of Mech Warrior games, but nothing really... Um, n nothing really uh, along the same lines of top-down, strategic, um, controlling an entire lance or more worth of mechs. Until this. Now, um, this game has been plagued, and the entire Battletech universe really has been plagued with licensing issues, but Hairbrain Games finally managed to get around to sorting out all the legal bullshit, and we have been granted possibly and arguably the 
best and greatest and probably most true to form, or at least true to tabletop, uh, top-down uh, strategic style mech warrior game, or mech battle tech game. And um, I'll tell you what, calling a battle tech, while it makes sense, I really hate them for it simply because googling any information on it is an absolute nightmare because you can barely figure out whether you're looking at information from the game or whether you're looking at information about the tabletop or the universe or what. So, yeah, kind of annoying that, but I'm willing to forgive them. I'm willing to forgive them. So, Rogue Tech is the modification of that. Battle Deck has a, has a campaign where you are essentially uh, trying to uh, retake the Oregon Coalition for the deposed ruler. Um, Rogue Tech gets rid of all of that and jumps you directly into your controlling your own uh, dropship, jump ship, and command ship, along with a lance of mechs and pilots. And essentially... As the game implies, it's roguelike in that you get... Here, here is a basic equipment to start with. Go nuts. Sandbox environment. And if you lose and get yourself blown up and go bankrupt, that's on you. So, um, this I think is uh, largely from the original. It's, it's a little bit weird. Um not really too relevant to be honest because you can be born anyway uh, i think you do actually start in no oregon space is like really far south you start more central anyway um rogue tech it's, it does let you start in different places of the galaxy so you get to start in different places so uh draconis combine the myrick the free world league house davion house steiner house liao magic magic Magistracy of Canopus, the Torian Concordat, Rimwald Periphery, and the Deep Periphery. Um, each start grants you, uh, I believe, a different starting location, but also different starting gear. So, for example, if we start with the Draconis Combine, we get a light PPC, a snub nose PPC, a PPC capacitor, which makes all the PPCs better, and dead fire LRM SRM ammo. So, you know, if you want to hit hard, Draconis will get Draconis will do you good. Um, Marek will give you streak SRM launchers and an Artemis system, which is fucking amazing. Um, and Artemis SRM ammo. So, yet yeah, these guys would give you like insane early accuracy. Because with the Artemis system, you get accuracy, massive accuracy buffs, and then Artemis SRM ammo to give you even more buffs, and then Streak SRMs, and Streak gives you accuracy buffs. So these guys might be a really good start, because early on, your mech pilots are absolute trash. Uh, Davion uh, AC to AC5s with a whole bunch of different really good uh, ammunition. So uh, that could be useful for the uh, Bang Bang. Uh, Lyrions give you pulse laser for that pew pew. Liao gives you stealth and ECM, so that could be really useful for not getting shot, which is very, very useful. Uh, Clopus gives you plasma cannon, plasma rifle, and a gauss ammo. Um, the rifle, I believe, or the cannon uses gauss ammo, so uh, you kind of want that. Um, Toron Concordat gives you machine guns, flamer, so kind of cheap stuff. Simple stuff. Uh, rifles for Rimmel Periphery. Rifles are basically tank guns. Uh, rocket launchers are one-shot launchers. Nah. And machine guns of the Periphery. I think... I'm wondering what we should do. I kind of like Marek. I really like the Artemis system because the Artemis 4 is super duper expensive. It would suck if we lose it, but having streaks and Artemis system and Artemis stuff would be extraordinarily useful for getting um, good hits on really agile max. So I think we're going to start with Marek, the, with the Free Worlds League. Um, yeah, this guy's from the campaign. We kind of ignore him. So uh, we get a Blackjack BJ-1. 
has a pair of AC2s. Uh, I don't know if this is actually still accurate because you do get slightly different mechs in Rogue Tech. Yeah, I think this is uh, inaccurate. This is basically um, uh, Battletech's uh, intro. So next, uh, here we go. So here we go. So we got a blackjack BJ one, blackjack, blackjack. Yeah, okay. So we got. So I don't know if that's still accurate. We'll find out. Now this is where we get our personal stats. So you do get your own personal character. They can't die. So even if they get headshotted with an AC twenty, they can't die. Um, but they will spend forever in Ben Bay. But uh, we get personal stats. So, if we were exiled, we get plus one to gunnery and tactics, and an AMS. If we struck out on our own, we get parting and tactics, and a gyro. Um, Family Bankrupt, tactics and guts, probably not really the least useful of the of the uh, four stats. Family does an accident, parting and guts, another, another gyro, and gunnery and guts with a reinforced cockpit. That will keep us safe, but we don't really need to be safe. Gunnery and Guts is a really good uh, combination, though. Would be amazing if there was a Gunnery and Piloting, but there isn't. So, Gunnery is probably the most useful. So, Gunnery and Tactics or Gunnery and Guts. I think we're going to go for... Do we want an AMS or a Reinforced Cockpit? You know what? Let's go for the AMS, for an Anti-Missile System. Gunnery and Tactics. All right. Uh, what do we want to be? Do we want to be a soldier, which gives us an extra gunnery, and a commands console, which is an amazing piece of kit. Uh, Frontier Pirate gives us guts and pirate gear, which is... Yeah. Uh, we still want gunnery. This will give us some melee skill. We don't really need it, I think. Uh, what else gives us gunnery? Ooh, a Frontier Freelance. It gives us tactics, but we get Endo Steel and Angel ECM, which is really good kit. Um, but we do need that gunnery, and the command console is just really good kit because uh, it gives you plus one initiative, makes you move faster. So we're gonna go. We're gonna be a soldier. Okay, now we get to pick a uh, what a character actually looks like. So obviously, we're gonna find the guy with the biggest, bushiest beard. Uh, let's see, beard, 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 that's a big, that's a nice bushy beard. Let's see if there's anybody, we, wow, look at that beard. That's a nice beard. Uh, let's see if there's a better one. That one's just super fancy. I kind of like the fancy beard. Uh, da, 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 da. Who else we got? Is anybody with a... Superior beard to this one. Hmm. Man, no, nah, I, li I like this guy's face more than this guy's face and beard. That's a good one. It's big and it's bushy, but mm, I don't know. I think we'll go back to it. Oh, this guy. Yes, I remember this guy. This is the character portrait that I first picked when I first played this game like a month when I first got it about a month ago. Cat ears. Why the cat ears? Okay, whatever. <laughs> that's that's a good one. I don't know. I don't like the face. Um, and these are the the original faces that came with the game. So yeah, no good beards amongst them. All right. So we've got a choice between this guy and where's the guy with the glorious beard and mustache. This guy and that guy. Hmm. This guy's probably closer to the right color. But this guy is just so fancy. Hmm. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll check this guy in a sec. Call sign. Of course. I'm just gonna go for a... Come on. I like this guy. Uh, let's go for... We'll pick a... Pick a nice name. 
Come on, give us a decent one. Uh, oh, yeah, that'll do. Perfect. Uh, I've never actually customized too much. Uh, I don't think this actually does too much to these portraits. It's only the randomized ones that actually matter. Yeah, these ones don't matter. Okay, never mind. Okay, we've got a portrait, we've got a name, we've got our stats. Four gunnery, two piloting, three tactics, two guts. We also get a bunch of experience that we can modify with, so let's go. <clears throat> so, while that loads, doesn't take too long to load at this stage, I believe. Um, right, so, what was I? Yeah, right, so you start off with, as basically with this junker which is a badly beaten up Argo. Uh, this here is our little dropship. So considering that this dropship carries four mechs in it, down to orbit, down to the planet and back, you can imagine how big this colossal hunk is. Now, first things first, we need to go have a look at, well, you know, let's have a look at the UI. So this is the finances. Um, every 30 days we have to pay our expenses or we go bankrupt and it's game over. So you do have a ticking clock. These are, these are our funds up here. So we start off with 2.1 million C-Builds. And these little notches indicate how many months we actually have worth of funds. So at the moment, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 months worth of actual uh, funding. And we have to pay it every 30 days. We have a countdown clock of what's happening down here. We are currently at Galatea, which is owned by the Lyrian Commonwealth. Uh, and this is where we are. So we're currently in orbit. We're not heading in and out of the system. Uh, Argo, we get to access uh, the system hiring hall and the shop. Uh, is there anybody in here worth it? Probably not. Well, he's got a lot of stuff. No. Okay. And of course, uh, we can also buy gear. Now, the current model, uh, the current version of uh, Rogue Tech uh, is essentially linked to an online store, uh, where, assuming that you activate it. So basically, what it means is that as other players play the game, they, the loot that they leave behind and the loot that they sell to the shop can potentially appear in everybody else's shops. So you can see here that for almost a million sea uh, bills, we can buy a piece of a grasshopper heavy mech. Uh, obviously, we need five pieces to actually assemble one, and we don't have five million credits, and there's only two, two uh, pieces anyway, so it doesn't do us any good. But for example, there are five pit parts of a Vindicator that is a nice 45 ton medium tank uh, mech for half a million. So we still can't afford all five, but if we had like an extra half a million, we could buy ourselves a Vindicator part, enough Vindicator parts to just buy a full Vindicator. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, these items have been put into this store by other players selling and looting and playing, which I think is pretty damn awesome. Except for the unlimited stuff. A lot of the unlimited stuff is just there by default. Uh, some, uh, certain ammo is there by default. Uh, we can also sell our own stuff, but we don't really have anything that much to sell right now. So uh, let's go have a look. Before uh, I'm just going to jump into contracts to kickstart the loading process. Because it has to generate contracts and it does a little bit slowly. Um, yeah. Okay. So that'll load in the background. Let's go have a look at our mech warriors. Now... Actually, before we do that, because apart from our main character, apart from main character, this guy, um, everybody else starts off at 333. So they're all pretty stock standard. Um, we do have a bunch of guys, though, uh, and gals. A bunch of guys and, guys and gals. And what I'm looking for right now, real quick, is who's the cheapest to operate. Now, our character is free, but every other mech, part, mech uh, warrior costs a salary monthly, and as they get better, their salary goes up. 
Some of them are mediocre in cost. Some of them are cheap. And where are you, you expensive bastard? You. And some of them are really expensive. And even though they have the same skill, the reason for that is because of their actual uh, stats and quirks. So he's a leaguer. So he was born in the free world league space. He was in the military. He is of nobility. And he is a Solaris gladiator. Now, what does that actually do? Well, a noble increases part maintenance and mood changes upon funding level. So they actually gain more or less um, morale and mood based on the funding level. That's not really good. Noble is terrible. They cost more. Um, and while we can make boost their mood higher, that's more expensive. It's really, really expensive to just boost one guy's mood. If we had an entire la uh, full la full kit of nobles, then maybe. But it's still going to be expensive, and the, and the maintenance is more expensive full stop. So, yeah, he's not that great. Military is a minor increase in starting XP, which is okay, but that quickly wears off as we gather up hundreds and thousands of XP. And he's a gladiator, less skill degradation for fat fatigue. I don't plan on running a guys while fatigue, except in absolute dire straits, so that doesn't do us any good. So, this guy is basically dead weight. And now he's not. Okay. So that's one down. Now, we can only launch one Lance of Max. That's four pilots. We only probably have four Max. So having any more than four, maybe five pilots, it doesn't do us any good at all. And we're one of them. So I think we're going to cull down to only four actual paid uh, warriors. Medusa is ridiculously well paid. He is his only ones that actually matter are that he's cautious, he's harder to hit, but he has a penalty to hit, which is like only a plus one, minus one. Um, he's a military, he's an officer, and he is uh, a mech warrior. So he gains just a lot of experience, but he is ridiculously expensive. Uh, he's also a technician, which actually has... Um, pop-up related bonuses so it doesn't do us any good in in, in his actual um piloting or operation of a mech but he's a technician which means that cer during certain pop-ups and events that he's involved with um he might get additional options or we, we might get additional options to actually do them but considering how much how expensive he is not worth it bye uh hammer hammer is cheap Hammer is cheap. He's military, so he gets the starting XP bonus. He's a spacer, which reduces the maintenance cost. He ha he has a uh, he's a command he has command experience, so he has moderate increase in starting cap. He's a athletic, reduces fatigue times, which means we can cycle him in faster once we can repair our mechs fast enough. And he's a mech warrior, so Hammer is amazing. Okay, we're definitely keeping Hammer. Glitch. Uh, she's brave, in a sphere, uh, federal, one of federated sun sp space, and she is, has a criminal background. Now, criminal is a bit of a mixed bag, uh, because it has a chance to steal from the company. Now, I've never had a pilot steal from the company that I've been told by the game, uh, but it does increase the chance to find specials in, in black market systems. So, it would be useful to have her on board. She's also a pretty decent pilot, and she's okay in terms of price. Decker has a reputation for constantly ruining his mech, but he is, he's a noble, but he's also a spacer. So his price is a little bit on the high side, but not as high as a true noble. Um, he also gets a stupid amount of experience. Uh, I don't know what it is with Decker, but what, uh, in, in the last version that I was playing but, uh, off camera, he was getting like four times the experience of every other pilot. Something ridiculous. Weirdly enough, he never actually got like four times far, uh, more higher level than everybody else. So, eh, I don't know. Um, but Decker is potentially ditchable. Uh, Behemoth is super cheap. Now, she is a criminal, but she's a spacer, and she is super-duper cheap. She's also brave, and I really do like her. She has been very, very dependable in every game that I've been in. Um, Archangel 
is mediocre. He is also a criminal, so we have a lot of criminals on our on our uh, roster. Uh, he is brave. He is reckless. So uh, it doesn't actually stay it on here for some reason. But reckless is the opposite of cautious. So you're more likely to hit, but you're more likely to be hit in return. Um, and lucky is uh, I forget what it does. But we currently have a lance or we have we currently have six and I think I want to call one more. Um, who do we want to call? Hammer is definitely in. Archangel is kind of mad. Behemoth is cheap, so she's in. Uh, I like glitch. I think it's a choice between Decker and Archangel at the moment. Decker is more expensive, but he's a meme and he has a beard. Archangel does not. Archangel, bye. Okay. Now, before we issue our actual skills, we need to know what, we, what we're actually running with. So, first things first, let's go have a look at our mechs. So, what do we got? First up, an assassin. It is... So, we have... Look, we have lengths of uh, two, one, two, three mediums and a light. So, assassin has... Uh, standard cockpit tag. Actually, let's go into the refit screen. See what we've got. So, we've got a light PPC and two SRMs. Uh, Guardian ECM, jump jet, and a tag. So, this is a good uh, little... Uh, very, 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 very maneuverable melee bot. Huh. Combination melee and uh, PPC SRM. This mech is a little bit all over the place, to be honest. And its armor is terrible. What is up with this mech's armor? We might have to do something about this one. We, we might have to, we're going to have to change this assassin around a little bit. Let's go have a look at the Vindicator. Alright, Vindicator has really good heat sinks. An ERPPC. Holy shit! ERPPC, medium pulse laser. Uh, pulse lasers have additional accuracy and ignore evasion, which is fantastic early on when enemies are very evasive. Um, but they generate more heat and they have less range. And they have variable damage as well. So the damage... So they can... So this medium pulse has a base damage of 30, but it can deal up to 40 or down to 20 for the same stability damage and heat. Uh, so we've got a second tag, which is useful. Um, but apart from that, this LRM combined with this ERPPC makes this a really nice artillery mech. Useful. Very useful. Alright, come back to that one. Alright, we got our Venom, which is our Zippy Light Mech. It doesn't have as much armor, but it's a little bit faster. Um, heavy PPC Venom. What the hell? I think this game wants us to blow things apart with a, with a PPC capacitor. Righto. Okay, so if this mech gets shot at all, if anything breathes at this Venom, it dies. But anything it hits is probably going to die, especially early on. 120 damage. I don't think there's a single me uh, a light mech or relative early mech that can handle that kind of hit. Maybe in the torso. Maybe a, tor a direct a center torso hit, but that's gonna blow right through armor. That's an interesting mech. It's only got the one hit, one shot too. This PPC would be much better in the arm. Not as safe, but it'll be more accurate, and we need the accuracy more than anything else. Yeah, we got nothing to actually boost the accuracy on that thing. All right. Uh, we might move the PPC into the arm on this one. No, we can't. It doesn't have a slot. Hmm, annoying. Okay, we'll come back to that. And last but not least, our Enforcer. Uh, 
AC-10 with a large and small laser that can only fire maybe one of them at a time. Um, we got no missile slots. And we only have eight rounds of AC-10 ammo. I think we might have to swap out the laser for... Do we have any other lasers? We got a large laser. That doesn't look any good. More ammo, maybe? Uh, we don't really have too much that we can fit into this thing. This is not going to be a too useful mech, I think. Uh, you know what? If we run the AC-10 until it runs out of ammo, and then we can swap running the AC-10 for the large laser. So we run the AC-10 and small laser, which gives us 8 and 12. That's 20 heat. We have 36 dissipation. So AC-10 plus small laser, and then once the AC-10 is out of ammo, we swap for the large laser only. That could work. Oh, dear Jesus crap. The armor on back armor on this thing is... is no. Okay, we got to do something about this. So, here's the thing about Rogue Tech. Rogue Tech has a fantastic little system called TAC, uh, or Through Armor Criticals. What this means is that if you hit a, a section for a certain percentage of its uh, either remaining or, to or, or total armor, um, you can potentially break a critical component within that section. Um, so, for example, if you critical heat sink, it can be repaired, assuming it's not destroyed entirely, but it basically turns off or does really bad things to you for the remainder of the battle, and then it costs money to repair it. So, for example, with this 115, I think it's 75% of the art of the total damage. So, if you hit for 75% of 115, then you can potentially critical the engine without having to actually break through the armor. I don't think it's 75%. I think it might be as low as 25%, but it's somewhere between 25 and 75%. With this, tw so 115, let's say 50, let's say, let's say it was 50%, right? You would have to hit this center torso for 50 damage to do a through armor critical. A little bit more, uh, almost 60 damage. On the other hand, if you hit it in the back, you would need to do 10. And basically every weapon does 10 damage. A small laser does 15. So having that little rear armor basically means that this enforcer cannot go anywhere near any enemies ever. Otherwise, it's just going to get flanked, shot in the back, and die. So we're going to have to shuffle around the armor a little bit and potentially move some weapons around as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, Put a break in the episode here, because we have just hit half an hour. And I am going to shuffle the armor and equipment around a little bit. We got two million. We got a couple of months to go. We racked up two extra months on our finances uh, by getting rid of uh, uh, excess pilots. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to cycle these around. And um, next episode, we are going to take them out for a spin. So thank you for watching. Next episode... Uh, we're going to continue with Battletech, and I uh, will see you then.